What's up guys, today we're discussing the Oculus Quest and comparing it with the PSVR on three major categories, display, tracking, and processing power. If you're one of the 4.2 million people who already owns a PSVR and haven't really dabbled in any other VR headsets, is the Oculus Quest enough of a jump to be worth it for you to drop another 400 on? Well, let's find out. If you want to see more VR related content, like the video for me so I know to focus more on this subject. But without further ado, let's get to it. The Oculus Quest was announced last September and people all over the internet have been comparing the device, rightfully so, to other PC gaming headsets as well as the Oculus Go. But for those of us who are on the PSVR bandwagon, those comparisons don't really mean too much. So how does this new product compare to what we've already got plugged into our PS4? Well, that's a bigger question than it sounds because where some features are upgraded, others are compromised. So let's start by discussing the display. The screen on the PSVR has a 1920 by 1080 resolution, which translates to only 960 by 1080 per eye, whereas the Oculus Quest is boasting a full 2880 by 1600 resolution, or 1440 by 1600 resolution per eye. Now on paper, this sounds like a huge upgrade in graphical fidelity, but we'll explain in a later section why this may not be as drastic as it sounds. One thing is sure though, text will be easier to read, and there will be less of a screen door effect in theory. Another part of the display to consider is the refresh rate. PlayStation has been very adamant about making every game on PSVR work with a 90Hz at bare minimum, but it supports up to a 120Hz refresh rate. This is imperative for motion sickness and comfort while in the VR world. However, the Oculus Quest unfortunately only supports up to a 72Hz refresh rate. That's not a drastic decrease, but statistically for roughly 5% of people who have trouble handling the refresh rate of PSVR already, this drop will instantly be noticeable. Flickering will no doubt be more frequent, causing motion sickness to be more prominent. The only thing remaining the same, as far as the display goes, is the field of view is staying at roughly 100 degrees each. So you can expect the same amount of screen space on both headsets. The next category we're going to discuss is the tracking. This here is where the Quest truly outperforms the PSVR on every level. The PSVR uses motion controllers that were released in 2010, and were not designed for VR in the first place, but were designed as a Wii-like motion controller. These controllers do not have any analog sticks, so moving around is limited to workarounds like aim to move or the teleport method. These controllers also use a very outdated tracking method of using a camera to track a light orb on top of the controller's position in 3D space. Oculus Touch, however, uses what they call constellation tracking that uses IR sensors in the controller to determine the precise position of the device with sub-millimeter accuracy and near zero latency. The PSVR is also vastly limited because it uses a single external camera positioned on or near your television set to track your headset and peripherals, which only tracks as much as one camera can see. And let me tell you, that is not much at all. The Oculus Quest, on the other hand, has a brand new inside out in sight technology. It has four wide angle cameras positioned on each corner of the headset, creating a view of the entire room that you're in, along with all of the peripherals without ever needing an external tracking device. Both headsets tout gyroscopes, accelerometers, and six degrees of freedom tracking as a standard in higher level VR headsets. The final category we should go over is the processing power and the cords. The PSVR utilizes the full power of either a PS4 or even the more powerful PS4 Pro. But with the extra power from the external source comes the problem of cable connections. The headset does have a pretty thick unsightly cable that runs from the side of your head down to the processing unit connected to the PS4. Meaning you can't venture too far away from the PS4, though the camera's field of view wouldn't let you anyways, and you constantly have the potential to trip over cords at any time. Which happens pretty frequently. As for the Quest, the headset is a self-contained unit with no external power source, which means no cords, but with the freedom of a cordless device brings you, there are some obvious compromises that need to be addressed. The first glaring concern is the mobile processor the headset runs on, the Snapdragon 835. It's the same processor used in the Samsung Galaxy S8, which is an over a year old processor. This is significant because you know how we talked about the higher resolution earlier? Well, numbers are great until we put them into practice. So no matter how high the resolution the screen may be, the graphics will always be at the mercy of the hardware it's being run on. 
so while the graphics may be sharper, the model's textures and draw distance will still suffer, especially compared to the graphical fidelity of a console-grade 8-core CPU that comes standard on PS4. So in the end, it really depends on what kind of experience you're after. Are you willing to put up some sacrifices in the refresh rate and graphical fidelity areas in exchange for an untethered freedom and major tracking upgrades? The quest is not so much a leap forward, but more a step diagonally. There will be pros and cons with any headset you choose, and it's up to you and your preferences to determine what is right for you. Personally, as a PSVR owner, I am psyched for the quest simply because of the cordless freedom and the upgraded tracking, and that's plenty enough for me to make the plunge to adopt a new hardware day one. But what do you think? Are you in the market for a quest, or is the PSVR just fine for your needs? If you currently have neither, which one are you planning on getting? Let me know in the comments. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you want to, and as always, I love you all, and I will see you in the next video.